You see, we all have greatness within us. But unfortunately, sometimes it gets shoved down or pushed aside. And that greatness that is within us can often be hidden, even from ourselves. Welcome to Music, Motivation, and More, the Positivity Podcast. I am your host, Gerald Simon. I am the founder of Music Motivation and the creator of the Cool Songs Club. You can learn more about each of these at musicmotivation.com and www.coolsongsclub.com. Every weekly podcast is sponsored by various businesses, groups, associations, and organizations. And today's podcast is sponsored by my company, Music Motivation. Every new weekly podcast comes out on Monday and follows this format. First, I do a welcome or introduction to each new podcast, and then I share a few perceptions I have many of which have been taken from an inspirational book I wrote titled Perceptions, Parables, and Pointers. Then I will always share a motivation in a minute, a few minutes on a motivational topic, after which I will share the music within and share one of the compositions I've composed from my various albums, EPs, and singles of original music I've created. You can listen to any of my music on Spotify, Pandora, iTunes, Amazon, or any other streaming site or online music store. I also have music videos you can watch on my YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash Gerald Simon. Finally, I will share Poetry That Motivates, a poem I have written taken from one of the poetry books I have published. So today's podcast is titled, Your Own Personal Progress Plan. And today I want to talk about what we personally can do to create a progress plan for ourselves. When we are younger and we are in grade school, we will generally meet with our teacher as we get older and we go into middle school or junior high into high school. We will meet with a counselor, and the counselor many times will help us try to map out what we would like to do. Now, she or he will take our suggestions, advice, input as they get to know us and try to help us determine what our likes are, what our interests are, and what we personally would like to do, either for a career or to help us start to figure out how to be prepared for the real world. But I would like to talk about how we personally can and should create our own personal progress plan for ourselves on a daily basis. So in today's podcast, we're going to talk about this very topic. But first, I would like to read to you my own personal progress plan, so to speak, and talk about my purpose and my mission in life. Now, Part of creating your own personal progress plan is to first figure out what your purpose and what your mission in life is. Now, this evolves daily, and it should, because as we grow, as we change, as we improve, as we progress, our ideas change. We should never remain stagnant. We must continually be improving and progressing. And I personally feel that if you are not improving and progressing, then unfortunately, you are digressing. It's one of those forwards versus backwards. Sometimes, I believe that as we continue to challenge ourselves and learn more and push ourselves, that we can discover more about ourselves. There are more talents for us to discover, more abilities that we can become capable and able of learning, of accomplishing, achieving. See, when we start to talk about goals, sometimes we limit ourselves. Often people will 
talk about setting goals at the first of the year. And they don't realize that every week we can and should be improving and progressing. I would like to read for you what I have written down as my purpose and my mission in life. Now, I would like to explain about this a little bit, but first, let me read this to you. On the back of every book that I have published, whether they are music books, whether they are my motivational self-help books or my poetry books, on the back of every single cover and on the inside as well, I have my personal mission statement, if you want to think of it as that. And this is what I have written down. It took me a while to think about what I personally view as my purpose and my mission in life. But this is what I wrote down and what is found on the back of every cover of my books. It says this, My purpose and mission in life is to motivate myself and others through my music and writing, to help others find their purpose and mission in life, and to teach values that encourage everyone everywhere to do and be their best. Now, for me, I wanted to have a personal mission statement that included my music because a big part of who I am is the music that I create, that I compose, that I share with others. But also a big part of who I am is my writing. I love to write. I love to write poetry. I love to write motivational material. I love to read and I love to learn as much as I can. So I wanted to create a mission statement that would allow me to focus on these two areas. But even more so than the music, even more so than the writing, one of my main personal goals in life is to find the good within everyone, to be friends with everyone, to see the good within others, to help them see the good within themselves, and to bring that out. One of my greatest goals in life is to help those around me be their best, to do what they would like to do, to see themselves, hopefully, as I see them, to help them realize their worth, their divinity, their goodness. You see, we all have greatness within us, but unfortunately, sometimes it gets shoved down or pushed aside, and that greatness that is within us can often be hidden, even from ourselves, either because we don't know where to look or because we are afraid to see that greatness within ourselves. Now, I don't believe anyone is greater than anyone else. That is not what this is about. It's about helping everyone find their true worth, their value, their importance. I believe in God, and as such, I believe I am a child of God, and I believe that every human being is a son or daughter of God. So for me, that belief helps me see everyone around me as my family, to treat them as family, to help them, to learn from them, to love them. And that is one of my main goals. What can I personally do to help those around me? And I would love to find out what you are personally doing to either serve and help those around you. It can be ever so subtle, ever so small. You don't need to move mountains. You can actually help those around you just by saying hi, being kind. But I would like to have you find out what your personal progress plan will be. And in order to do that, first and foremost, you need to find out what your purpose and mission in life is. Who are you? What makes you tick? What gets you excited to get up and get out of bed every morning? What are you passionate about? We all have likes, we all have dislikes, we all have interests, we all have hobbies. But more so than the hobbies, there is something within everyone that they personally are so connected to, so committed to, so involved in, that it is more than a hobby, more than a talent. It is who they are. You think of the artist. All they want to do is draw or paint. They are artists, the poet, the actor, 
the mathematician, the scientist, the inventor, the preacher. You see, everyone has an area of influence. And it's because maybe it began or started as a talent or a hobby, but then it turned into something much more than just a talent or a hobby. And so right now, I would like to kind of move forward. I'll come back to this in a second, but I'd like to actually read from my book, Perceptions, Parables, and Pointers, one of my perceptions of life. Now, this perception is about being certain of the uncertainties in life. This is on page 10 of my book, Perceptions, Parables, and Pointers. And I'm going to read this, and then I'll expound a little more on this particular topic. And then I'm going to follow up with what we were talking about just a minute ago. It says this in the book, Be certain of the uncertainties in life. No matter how much you think you know, continually think about how much more you ought to and could know. Work on what you don't know. Search for knowledge. Don't just think about it. Actively seek it. Knowledge empowers you with the ability to empower others. Share your knowledge with others. Help others improve and become better. Now, in part, the reason why I wanted to share this little perception from my book in this podcast is because, again, it goes back to our purpose and our mission. Life is uncertain. We never know what's going to happen. But even though we don't know what's going to happen today or tomorrow or next week, even though we may not know what is going to happen in five minutes or ten minutes or an hour from this very moment, we can focus on what our purpose and mission in life is and should be. We have that ability to think about who we are and who we can become. It is really not contingent on who we were in the past. And some people tend to get caught up in who they were yesterday, and that limits them or prohibits their personal growth. Everything we have done in the past has led us to where we are at this particular moment in life. And the reason why both good and bad, all the experiences we have had, have shaped us and formed us to who we have become is because when we have taken those experiences, those experiences become part of us. But we must learn from those experiences. We can learn from the good, we can learn from the bad. But if we attach either the good or the bad to ourselves, that is when you run the risk of thinking you are better than others. Or, unfortunately, thinking you are worse than others. See, everything is an experience. And life is meant to be experienced. And as we go through life, we can share our experiences with those around us. Because guess what? Everyone is having a good day or a bad day. And we will have good days and bad days. And sometimes when we are having bad days, we need to rely on our friends, our neighbors, our family. They may be having a good day and they can help pull us out of our pit of pessimism, so to speak. They can help us see through the darkness that surrounds us to find the light. They can help us find hope, even if we are hopeless. And, and that is part of the power of having a purpose. And I encourage you, if you do not know what your own personal mission statement or purpose in life is yet, I encourage you and challenge you to take some time this week to think about it. Reflect. Ponder. What makes you who you are? You can think about your characteristics. You can think about your hobbies, your talents, your interests. But then, don't solely think about how those individual characteristics have helped you accomplish whatever you have accomplished. But think about how you can channel all of the energy that you have, the intensity, the focus that you have into serving others, helping others. What can you do to be a positive impact and influence on those around you? That is the question that we must ask ourselves. Now I would like to read to you one of my favorite quotes, 
In the back of the book, Perceptions, Parables, and Pointers, there are 222 motivational quotes by some of the most amazing men and women throughout history. And so I'd like to read one, and this will be our motivation in a minute thought. This is by James Allen. You believe, and upon this little word, belief, hang all our sorrows and joys. That outward things have the power to make or mar your life. By so doing, you submit to those outward things. Confess that you are their slave, and they your unconditional master. By so doing, you invest them with a power which they do not of themselves possess, and you succumb in reality not to the mere circumstances, but to the gloom or gladness, the fear or hope, the strength or weakness, which your thought sphere has thrown around them. Now, this is an amazing quote by James Allen, and I love his motivational self-help books. Of course, he was one of the great thought thinkers of his time period, and one of the foremost leading motivational experts in a time period when the motivational, inspirational area that we see as a business today did not really exist to the extent in which it does today. One of my favorite books by James Allen, of course, is As a Man Thinketh. If you have not read that book, it should be a required reading for everyone. But this quote of his right here. And I've included it in this book because it is one of my favorite quotes. And all 222 of these quotes from various men and women throughout history in this book truly are some of my inspirational words of wisdom I turn to when I need to be inspired. But I love how he said, you believe. And then he said, upon this little word belief, hang all our sorrows and joys. It's true. All of the joys we experience in life, all of the sorrows we experience in life, it's all based on our beliefs. We can believe that something is good. We can believe something is bad. It's how we view life. It's how we see things. When we see the world in a tragedy, tragic, terrible, horrible, dreary experience, we become slaves to our thoughts. But if we look around and if we see the good, if we see the positives, if we focus on faith instead of fear, if we hang on to hope instead of clinging to these sad and terrible characteristics, we will actually see the world and as he said, we succumb in reality not to the mere circumstances, but to the gloom or gladness, the fear or hope, the strength or weakness, which your thought sphere has thrown around them. We create our own reality based upon what we believe. If we are expecting the worst, we will receive the worst. If we seek the best, and if we look for the good in everything and everyone, we will find it. So right now, for the music within portion of this podcast, I would like us to listen to Heaven on Earth. This is a piano solo that I composed, and it's from my album, The Dawn of a New Age. Now, with this, as I was composing this at the piano, it really was in many ways, a heavenly experience for me because I started creating just a right-hand melody and then the left hand just started flowing. And as I began playing it, it's, it's weird to talk about because it was almost like it was an out-of-body experience, almost like a heavenly experience, for lack of a better word. But let's listen to this. I'm playing the piano on this, and this is from my album and book, The Dawn of a New Age, and this is titled Heaven on Earth. Let me know what you think. Thank you. 
So that was Heaven on Earth. And you can listen to that on Spotify, Pandora, iTunes, Amazon, all the different streaming sites. But when we think about musically what we can portray or what we hope to portray, as I played that piece, I was trying to depict and almost evoke feelings from the listeners. And in part, they were feelings that I felt as I composed that at the piano, but they were feelings of peace. I was trying to convey what I was feeling when I was composing that, and I was feeling such inner peace, such a calmness, a gentle, almost serene feeling as I composed that at the piano. And for me, when I can sit down to the piano, it's wonderful because I can express whatever emotions I'm feeling at the time. If I want to be loud and crazy and chaotic, if I want to get rid of some of my fears or my frustrations, for me, the piano and then other instruments as well, it has become a way for me to share my emotions in a way that I can share them without letting my emotions take over me. Because sometimes... When we are so emotionally involved, we can actually say things we regret. We can do things in the heat of the moment that later on we would like to kick ourselves over because what we said, even though we felt and thought those things in the heat of the moment, after we've had a moment to collect ourselves, gather our thoughts, and calm down a bit, we realize we can never take back the words we speak or that we share in a moment of heat. If we're arguing, if we're angry, frustrated, we can't take those back. We need to be so careful with what we say, how we speak, what we do. We can never take back the words we speak. We can never undo the harmful deeds we do. Which is why we should be so careful and so focused on helping those around us, on being good to those around us. And in truth, as we've talked about earlier, we can really create either heaven here on earth, or 
We can even create hellish experiences. And it's all based on our thoughts, what we experience, what we see. We can have the worst experience in the world, and yet if we can remain positive, and it's very difficult at times to do, but if we can remain positive, it can help us overcome those insecurities we feel, those fears, those moments of self-doubt or self-worth, when we want to quit, when we want to give up. We all have times when we struggle, when we don't know what to do. We don't know where to go. No one is exempt. But as we begin to look at life through different lenses and start to focus more intently and more intensely on how we personally are acting or reacting to whatever situation it may be, that is when we can see personal growth within us. When we can see, as James Allen mentioned a few moments ago in the quote I read, that we are not enabling or giving a right to others or situations or joys or fears or emotions, we are not becoming slaves to our emotions. We can be in control. And that is part of what we are learning, and that is why with this piece, Heaven on Earth, I wanted to create something that would hopefully bring that peace into our daily lives. So I hope you enjoyed listening to that. Right now, I would like to finish, and I'm going to finish with the poetry that motivates. Now, this is from my book, The As If Principle, Motivational Poetry, and that book features 222 motivational poems that I have written over the course of about 20 years. And this poem is titled, The Journey Before Me. It's on page 9 from the book, and I'm going to read it right now. The Journey Before Me The journey before me is a difficult one. It's a perilous path to walk. It is laden with thorns and treacherous traps, strewn with glass and rock. Pitfalls surround me, the darkness engulfs me, black as night as the day. Terror abounds, and sickness compounds, frightening my health away. Calamities come, decay descends, sorrow stays too long. Disease ensues, my spirits sink, and everything turns out wrong. Yet up ahead in the distance before me, I see the light of day. The darkness fades, the sickness subsides, my troubles have gone away. Though terrifying the trail may be, my spirit is strengthened, my soul is set free. Ignorance turns to intelligence, fear turns into faith. Troubles turn into triumphs. In life, this is commonplace. With that, I personally hope that we can think about our own personal journey before us. Now, it's the journey of life, and we all are walking on this journey of life. As the first paragraph says in this poem, the journey before me is a difficult one. It's a perilous path to walk. And if you think about it, Life can be so difficult. It can be so painful at times. And it is not an easy or even fun picnic when we have health problems, when we have financial problems, when someone loses a job. It's difficult. It is so difficult. And I have had many health problems. My wife has had many health issues. And I'll explain about some of those throughout this podcast. But it's difficult when you have those health problems. Many times, not just because of the health problems, but because those health problems bring on financial problems where with doctor visits and doctor bills, you start to pay quite a bit. And those medical bills begin to add up quickly. It's interesting because my wife, a few years ago, she fell and broke her back. And she broke L1, L2, and L3. It was essentially a clean break but she was on bed rest for almost two months. And when you have little kids, that is very, very difficult when the mom is on bed rest, but also when you have medical bills. And we've had medical bills before, and they've piled up, and, and you're trying to pay off the medical bills. And, and again, 
all of these problems. It's a part of life. What is so amazing and so sweet about this, my wife never complained. Even with a broken back, she was in horrible pain, excruciating pain. She never complained. She was sweet and cheerful throughout the entire thing. And I would have to help her and take care of her and, and try to help her stand up or move. And we went to various specialists, and they told us that they could take an x-ray of her broken bones in 10 or 15 years, and it would be exactly the same. Nothing would change. Now, thankfully, on the bright side, she had a broken back, yes, but she was not paralyzed. She was in severe pain. And anyone who has broken their back before or had health problems, you know how difficult it can be. Even moving, sitting, laughing, coughing, it hurts. And yet my wife is such a great example to me because even in that difficult, extremely difficult experience, she was so positive. And she was a good example to me because there are days when I have difficult times, not to the point of having a broken back, but there are times when I have a struggle or a problem, whether it's a, a new business idea that I've created, but then I have a problem, how do I finance this, or how do I try and help this customer who is trying to learn something, and so I'm trying to figure out for each problem how I can come up with a solution. And again, for me personally, whenever I can see someone else who is a good example to me, it helps me want to be a better example for others. And so it is my hope that every day we will take just a few minutes throughout the day and we will be able to look and see what we have done or are doing that day, that moment, to help those around us. If you want, you can think about it as in the morning, have a pre-progress report where you think about what you would like to accomplish in terms of helping those around you. And then at night, you can actually report on what you have done to assist or help those around you, whether it's being positive, smiling, helping, saying a compliment to someone. We can do so much good in so little time that we can help those around us who are struggling because we will have days maybe even dark and dreary days when we will need someone to help us, to comfort us, to pick us up when we've fallen, to strengthen us when we are weak. So if we can do that and find individuals around us who need a little extra positivity, they need a pick-me-up, they need a, a friendly helping hand, a smiling person, someone who can compliment them and thank them for being who they are. So set aside time every day in the morning to prepare for the good you will do, and then in the evening, look back and ponder about how you were able to allow your positive personality to shine through and think about the good you have done today and each day. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast of Music Motivation and More. Hope you have a wonderful week and continue to be positive in all you do. Keep up the great work and thanks for listening. Thank you for listening to this podcast on music, motivation, and more. I'm so grateful for your support and for taking the time to listen to this podcast. You can learn more about my music and various books I've published by visiting my website, www.musicmotivation.com. My music is available on Spotify, Pandora, Amazon, iTunes, and can be found on all online music stores and streaming sites. My motivational books and poetry books can be purchased on Amazon from Barnes & Noble, various online bookstores, and also traditional bookstores as well. I release weekly videos on my YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash Gerald Simon. You can also follow me on Facebook at facebook.com slash Gerald Simon. If you'd like to, you can connect with me on Instagram, Twitter, and most social media sites. 
If you'd like to learn more about motivating and inspiring piano students, please visit my website, www.coolsongsclub.com, to learn how and why I began composing what had become known as Fun, Cool Songs. These cool songs were composed to help motivate piano students the fun way, especially during their teenage years. So I hope you check it out, and please feel free to contact me if you have any questions about anything. My contact info is found on my website, www.musicmotivation.com. But I would love to connect with you, and if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. I try to respond to as many questions as I can, and I may answer some on this podcast, or I can email you personally, but I try to respond to as many people as I can. So please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions about anything. Thank you again for listening. Hope you guys have a great week. See ya.